Today's video is made possible by Squarespace. What's up tech fans, Kevin here on Tech of Tomorrow. Now, many of you will remember that about a month and a half ago, we brought you guys a review of the console version of Dark Souls 2, just to get an idea of how the actual game itself was. But we also promised that once the PC version came out and we got our hands on it, we'd bring you guys an update, letting you know how it performs and just how the port was handled. Now, anyone that's played the first Dark Souls on PC can tell you that that port just was not handled very well at all. There are a lot of problems with it, including the fact that it was locked at 1024 by 720, regardless of your native resolution, and it was locked at 30 frames per second. And thankfully, this is one respect that Dark Souls 2 has not continued from that. So let's check it out. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be showing you gameplay from both the Xbox 360 and PC versions of the game. Now, obviously, since this has been uploaded to YouTube, it is gonna be compressed, and you're not gonna notice all the differences as well as you would have otherwise, but it will give you some idea. Now, depending on which scenes you're seeing, we will let you know in the corner of the screen whether it's the 360 or PC version, and which character I use is different for them. I'm gonna have a heavily armored knight character for the Xbox, and a mage-looking character for PC. So the first big thing to note right away between these two versions is, of course, the resolution. The Xbox 360 and PS3 versions of Dark Souls 2 were both only at 720p, whereas on PC it supports whatever your native resolution is, meaning you can of course watch it in 1080p or even as high as 4K if you've got the setup for it. This results in much crisper, cleaner looking gameplay with various little odd effects and details becoming much more noticeable, like debris floating in the air. What makes an even bigger difference though is its frame rate. On console, people were only getting 30 frames per second and even less at times, with a lot of screen tearing issues as well, whereas the PC version runs smoothly at 60 frames per second. Now this is an FPS limit once again, but it's 60 rather than 30 FPS, and in our system, which includes a GTX 780 and an i7-4770K processor, with all the settings at max and the resolution at 2560 by 1440 we didn't see it dip once from the consistent reading of 60 frames per second, no matter how much action was going on on screen. Now this brings up another couple issues that are really important in regards to how the port was handled. There were a lot of things that just weren't really taken care of in the first Dark Souls game as far as how you should treat a PC port, and that's been addressed this time with Dark Souls 2. First off, video settings are actually a thing. The first game only featured two checkmark boxes for anti-aliasing and motion blur, whereas 2 gives users options to tweak model details, draw distance, shadows, water effects, and more, so you can really push the game to look its best or make it easier on your system if you're running something with less power. One other small detail that just brightened my day right away when I noticed it is the fact that you can actually skip the opening logos this time, rather than having to sit through them every time you start up the game or quit to the main menu like you had to deal with in the first Dark Souls. Now, control-wise, the game is still very much all about gamepad. Keyboard and mouse controls are a bit more refined than they were the first time around, but the opening tutorial still assumes gamepad commands for doing things, and you'll still get prompts in the form of press A to activate or press select button for help. You can take your time reading the key bindings or customizing them to your preference and practice with it a while if you really want to play on keyboard rather than a gamepad, but the experience definitely lends itself more to the latter as the preferred and more comfortable form of control. So what this means is that this time around, From Software really paid attention to what it means to make a PC port and give people what they want, and made it look even better than its console counterparts to boot. It still doesn't look quite as good as the previews that we saw back before the game was released, a disturbing trend we've seen across a lot of games these days, but it's still a huge step forward. Not to mention, of course, the fact that this is a PC version, meaning community mods are already in the works to make this even better. In fact, the original modder who fixed Dark Souls 1 already has some beta patches out for further graphical updates to 2. So those of you that waited patiently for the PC version since the console release two months ago can be happy knowing that while you waited longer, you are getting the visually better experience. Now for those of you that haven't heard of Dark Souls or have heard about it but haven't played yet and aren't sure about it, you can check out a floor review we posted two months ago at this link right here, or we'll have it linked in the description as well. And if you're too lazy to click on that, here's the Cliff Notes version. In many ways, Dark Souls 2 is a mechanical improvement of the first, with a much heavier emphasis on giving players early on freedom and a lack of direction. This hurts the game's sense of storytelling a bit, but in return gives players a greater sense of agency and exploration, and an overall easier experience since you can spend more time leveling up and going at the pace you want. Multiplayer aspects in general have been improved with an easier method of co-op with friends, and New Covenants offer similar yet interesting spins on different forms of PvE and PvP. It's the easiest of the Souls games, but still a hard game overall, and a great introduction for those of you that were scared off by the initial learning cliff of Demon Souls or Dark Souls. 
So there's the short, short version. If you want a more in-depth full review with more gameplay, just go ahead and check out those links I mentioned earlier. Now, before I get out of here, I do want to take a moment to thank Squarespace for helping us make today's video possible. Squarespace is one of the fastest and easiest ways to make your own website thanks to drag and drop functionality. And everything is optimized to look great no matter what device you're viewing from, whether it be a desktop, tablet, or smartphone. They've got a great support staff working out in New York available all day, every day, and pricing starts out as low as eight bucks a month, and even with a free domain if you sign up for the year. If you want to give it a shot, they were awesome enough to give our viewers the chance to sign up for a seven day free trial, and those of you that end up liking it and want to keep using it will also get 10% off your final order. All you gotta do is use the promo code TOT at checkout. And make sure to use that code so you can get those benefits and help show us some support. Well, that was our little update vid for the PC release of Dark Souls 2. If you want to grab a copy of it for yourself, check out the link in the description. And while you're down there, if you enjoyed this vid, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button to let us know. Now, if you want more up-to-date content, please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already, as well as follow me on my personal Twitter, at Kevin Kenson. Until next time, guys, I'm Kevin for Tech of Tomorrow, and we'll see you later.